Hello everybody and welcome to exercise 9. And in this problem, we're going to be trying to calculate the work needed to empty a tank in a couple of um, situations. Okay, so let's take a minute just to read what they're giving us here. So we've got a cylindrical tank with a radius of 1 meter and a height of 5 meters. Let's maybe start by just labeling those distances. Okay, so we've got a one, rad one meter radius there and a total height of five. Okay, and in this video, we're just going to be looking at part A. Okay, and in that part, they're telling us that the tank is standing upright. So same situation that we see in the picture, and it's half full of water. Okay, so the very top of the water column is sitting here, and we're imagining the water kind of being down here in this case. Okay, now, why do we need calculus to do this problem? Let's review this again, because work, calculating work is really about taking force times distance, okay? Force in this particular case is the weight of the water and the distance is just the distance that we're moving it. Okay, the issue that we run into here is that to empty this tank, different parts of the water are gonna move different distances. So for example, the slice of water that's at the very top that one slice has to move just 2.5 meters to get to the top of the tank, but as you get closer to the bottom, the water down here at the very bottom, that has to move the entire five meters. And so it's the fact that different slices of the water move different distances that turn this into a calculus problem. We sort of need to calculate the work needed to move one slice of the water in the tank at a time. Okay, so that's gonna be our basic strategy. Right, so in, to do part A here, I'm going to start by just drawing a second picture of this. Okay, so here's our water tank again. And I'm going to draw in the slice of the water that's at the very top. Remember that the tank is just half full here. Okay, and our strategy is just going to be to sort of take an arbitrary slice that's somewhere in the tank and to just focus on how much work it would take to move that one slice to the top of the tank. All right, and so the customary way of doing that is to say, okay, we don't know exactly where the slice is, so it has to move some distance y to the top of the tank. Let's remind ourselves that we know what the radius is. Okay, and the two components of work again are force and distance. Okay, so we need to do two things to nail down the force and the distance. And again, the force in this case is going to be weight. Okay, so our first mission here is to calculate the weight of just that red slice over here that we drew. Okay, so let's think about the factors in the problem that are going to influence the weight of that slice. One of them is going to be the volume of it. Okay, and in this particular problem, it would be convenient to use units of meters cubed for volume. What's another factor that would that would um, influence the weight of the slice. Okay, how about the density of the water? Okay, they actually gave us a number for that. That's the 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. And I'm kind of keeping track of my units above. Notice that if we take our units and multiply what we have so far, the meters cubed are gonna cancel and we get kilograms. Is kilograms a weight? No, it's, it's a mass. Okay, and we want the weight of the slice, so there's a missing piece here, and it's the acceleration of gravity. Okay, that's going to be have units of meters per second squared, and notice the units that are left now, kilograms times meters per second squared, you put those together and you get newtons, which is the correct unit of weight. Okay, and so we need to just write down expressions for these three things. Okay, so starting with the volume, what would the volume of this slice be? Well, we know what its radius is. So we could start with an area that has the shape of a circle. So pi times one squared, and then we're gonna multiply it by its thickness, the height, which we'll call dy because it's a really small number. So if you take that area, pi one squared times dy, you get volume, which takes care of the first term. Then we come to density, that was given in the problem to be a thousand. Okay, and then acceleration of gravity, that's just gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared. 
Okay, so put those all together, and we could take 1,000, multiply by 9.8, and get 9,800 pi, 1 squared is just 1, times dy, and then remind ourselves that the units here are newtons. Okay, so what we've just calculated then is an expression for the weight of just this one slice of the water in our tank. Okay, so that's the force. The second piece of work again is the distance. Okay, and we mean the distance traveled by the slice, but we gave that distance a name. Okay, we, we called that distance y in our picture, and so that slice of water is going to move a distance of y meters. Okay, and notice that if you take these two units, newtons and meters, and multiply them together, you get the right units for work, joules. Okay, so to finish this up then, okay, and to actually get the work, we're going to take and multiply the force times the distance, 9800 pi y dy, that's basically just taking these two things and multiplying them together. That would be the work to move the one slice to the top. To get the entire work over the entire tank, we need to integrate. And the question left then is what are the limits? Okay, where do we start and where do we stop? Okay, well remember, the key here again is to ask yourself, what is the range of y values that we could have? Remember that y represents the distance that a slice can travel. So if you start with the slice in the top up here, how far does that slice have to move to go to the top of the tank? 2.5, okay, that's this distance. So that means that our lower limit of integration down here must be 2.5. Okay, and then, we keep adding up and we keep adding up and eventually we come to the slice at the very bottom. How far does that have to move? Well, that has to move the entire five meters to the top of the tank. And so five must be our upper limit. Okay, and again, 2.5 and five, that's just the range of distances that our slices need to move. Okay, and the last step is to actually do the integral. All right, so let's take the 9800 pi out. It's constant. That means that we just need to integrate y dy, which is not too bad. Okay, so antiderivative for y is going to be y squared over 2 from 5 to 2.5. Okay, substitute in our limits. And that's going to give us a 5 squared over 2 minus a 2.5 squared over 2. And you can double check me and confirm that this works out to be, if we round off 288,634, and we confirmed up here that our units are newtons times meters, so we should be getting joules for our work. Okay, and there's our answer.